one yes. who paid my debt. Yes. The crucified life. I heard something about that last evening. Thank you, Lord. Book ends. Book ends. Well, now we're going to visit with different bookends. The chippies, they don't look anything like you at all. So they must be the other bookend. And they hold everything together. And they've been holding you together. Amen. Amen. This evening is a, an extra special time for our church. How humbled we ought to be. I am deeply humbled that you two are here with us. I had an opportunity last April uh, when you could fly anywhere. You still can, just jump in. If it be God's will, it'll be the same as if it ever was. God will get you there. The time we had Oh, gosh. Harold, what a time. Bam. It was even that loud when we were there. That's how the airplane landed in Adola. Yeah. <laughs> Sound effects, thank you very much. You guys do all that for free, don't you? Thank you. What a blessing. But yes, and uh, of course, Terry Sanchez come along, and we had quite a time. And uh, caught a glimpse of you preaching, though you don't know that I heard but also, too, the opportunity to just uh, see the heart of a man expressed in the heart for others, uh, for all that were there. But I have to tell you that the, the part that endeared me beyond Alex and Crystal's love for the Lord Jesus Christ is their love for one another. They truly love one another and love those two beautiful girls. And I'm so thankful that God still ordains all according to his will and that he found fit divinely and sovereignly to bring Alex and Crystal to Kafula Futa two years ago, give or take, and be by their side. And over the years, there have been many that have come and done the work of the Lord, but for some reason, I really believe this is an extra special time in the work of God in Kafula Futa, GCMS, partnering with I Am Here and everything. Our church, First Bible, is the beneficiaries. Again, to whom much is given, much is required. And him that is committed much, of him shall be asked the more. So God is going to ask us more. And that's all right, because God's going to provide the more. And there's absolutely... Nothing that can stop what God would do through you unless you said no to God. And then God will choose to use someone else. But I would rather that he would use us as a church to continue to support the work, to partner with that work. That being said, please continue to pray through your commitment. When you think about that commitment card that you have and the, oh, well, maybe it's not up there, but that commitment card that you have, um, go ahead and just leave it right there. That'll be fine. Just, that'll be, there we go. That'll be fine. But that commitment card that you have, please take the time to put it in the offering basket. It's getting full. We doubled our amount. We're getting there. Woohoo! Yay! The basket's going to be overfilled with commitment cards. And I'm just asking you to pray about, of course, your commitment to missions. We need to continue to support our missionaries. But beyond that, this year, a special offering. Make your commitment. Ask the Lord to put it upon your heart what it is. Put that commitment in the basket on that card and deliver that monies by the end of this year. And, but we'll take the commitments all October and we'll be able to let Brian and Alex and Pastor Pule know what God has done through us to be able to let them know that beyond our prayer and our devotion to see God continue his handiwork through them, that also too, here's a, 
a little shot in the arm, a down payment on the work that will continue in 2021 and beyond that time. So please, church, continue to pray through that and be involved with that commitment to the work at Kafula Futa. Alice and Crystal, have you gotten a little bit more nervous since I've been talking the last three minutes? Good. Your wife is very nervous. Praise the Lord. Alex is not. Alex is, has ice water in his veins. <laughs> With great honor and privilege, I introduce to you Alex and Crystal Chippy. Please come. I may ugly cry at any point. <laughs> when I was preparing um, my testimony for this evening, I was kind of struggling, to be honest. Um, but something that the Lord kept bringing to me multiple times over the last week or so is what I'm about to uh, share with you. And the key word, the key word that just kept repeating itself over and over and over again is dependency. So then as I started reflecting over my life the last five or so years, God just opened my eyes. And I'm not going to lie to you, I was, sitting, I was sitting today trying to just pin some things down. And um, gosh, it just really hit me what God has been doing in my life in the last five years, and so that's what I want to share with you. In July of 2015, I moved to Zambia, Africa, and I married my best friend. I couldn't ask for a better husband. He's the biggest servant in our house, and that's the truth. And I'm so grateful for that. And I wouldn't be here today if it were not for Jesus Christ and my husband. Uh, soon after I got to Zambia, it's kind of a funny story now. It was not funny then. <laughs> I, uh, there's such a thing as, it's called load shedding. Okay, let me tell you about what load shedding is. Load shedding is uh, when they decide to literally take away electricity for sometimes several hours out of the day because the power company cannot support the entire country 24-7, 365 days a year. So it just happened to be that the year that I got there, uh, we were load shedding several times every single day, and it was at different hours. We weren't on a consistent schedule at that point. So I had taken my phone into the bathroom because I know y'all were going to wonder why was I taking my phone into the bathroom. But that's why, because we were load shedding. It was dark. I took my phone into the bathroom because it was my flashlight, okay? And I dropped it in the toilet. <laughs> I dropped it in the toilet. So it stopped working. It's, it stopped work. Same night, like, I, I fished it out of the toilet. I did. I, I, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it. I fished that sucker out of the toilet. <laughs> and I tried to stick it in, like, some rice to dry it out. And uh, it was not to be recovered. <laughs> not at all. So why do I share that with you? Because it was one of my, I would have called it one of my lifelines. 
because it was one of the only things I had to be able to keep in contact with people over here. Now, I have since, we've since figured all of that out, but at the time, uh, it was either that or you go into town, into the internet cafe, and you, you know, you get on their, their computers, and they're super slow, <laughs> you know, and I was able to get out a few things that way. God had to separate me. And this is how I like to illustrate, like, the first year of my life in Zambia. If you've ever uh, bought a fish, you know that when you get that fish, you're not supposed to go and take it and put it directly into the fish tank, right? Because if you do, the fish can go into shock, it can die, end of story. So... <laughs> So how I like to explain that in my first year is I was so very much like that fish and I've, I felt isolated and um, in some ways I felt very alone and that's nothing against my husband whatsoever because, oh my gosh, I couldn't have made it through. I cried so many times. Just pray for him, please. <laughs> I cried so many times that first year, um, but God saw us through. And uh, God showed me where my dependency was. Before I uh, moved to Zambia, this was my church home. And uh, I still very much consider this, you know, my home. I don't, <laughs> I don't feel like a, even though there are many new faces, this still feels like home to me. And uh, this is family to me. And... Uh, before I went to Zambia, I had uh, many close relationships, many couples who were like parents to me. Um, a lot of people who poured their lives into me. And God showed me that I was more dependent upon man than I was on him. That was a hard truth to learn. Because there's nothing like the body of Christ. But what do you do when you don't have an army around you? What do you do when you're standing on an island? You have to depend on God. In July of 2018, Brian Calloway approached my husband and I and uh, asked us to pray about uh, temporarily moving to Kafuafuta. Temporarily. Tem temporarily. Okay, that's what you said. <laughs> so we prayed about it and... Um, you know, I think we've shared a few few times that obviously we accepted. And we went to the mission, and, you know, the purpose was because Tammy needed to come back. And so I was to kind of take over and maintain the treasury while she was gone. So that was, um, that was how God moved us to the mission. You know, and obviously through our time there, you know, God showed my husband and myself that that is where we where to stay. So in September of 2019, the Callaways uh, came back here on furlough. And I had no idea we were about to begin one of the hardest journeys. Let me tell you guys, please pray for your missionaries. Please pray for your missionaries. You never know what they might be going through. And I obviously can't share everything with you, but I can tell you that there are some high waters to walk through. And there are some hard things. There was more than one time I wanted to say I'm done. I can't keep going. Let me 
tell you about this couple here. This couple means so much to us. God used them to shepherd us through the last year of our lives. And you want to talk about in samples. Look at Brian and Tammy Calloway. They were in samples to us. A lot of times they didn't know it. They didn't know. But they were. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 3, it says, Neither as being lords over our God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. We watched this couple. And even though they were, you know, thousands of miles away from us during their time on furlough, in many ways, it felt like they were right there with us, walking with us and being laborers alongside us. Tammy, thank you for pouring into my life. (laughs) She shared a lot of things that, you know, that they were able to do while in Zambia, but I'm going to share with you how she poured into my life. I saw a woman who, who struggled, and in the face of struggles, she saw her God. A woman who was struggling herself, and she kicked me in the booty and said, you need to keep going, Crystal. (sighs) I will forever be grateful for our time that we were able to share physically there still at the mission. I learned a lot from you. Thank you. I love you. (laughs) I'm sorry. I told you I was going to ugly cry. (laughs) There's a verse, and maybe you've seen it already pass through. There is a verse that I clung to before going to Zambia. So much so that actually my sister Crystal, she made this beautiful wall hanging. She actually like did it like embroidery or how I don't know how she does what she does, but it was it's beautiful. And I took it with me and it's been hanging in our house as a constant reminder. Jeremiah 17, verse 8, For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. I had no idea when God gave me that verse over five years ago that he was about to walk me through it. He showed me where my dependency was. He showed me where my dependency needed to be. To be uncommon, you must be dependent. Not on self, not on man, but on God. We have to be dependent on him. For without him, we can do nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the testimony. I'm so blessed. I just want to say thank you uh, to the church, the pastor, Pastor Babi, even the entire leadership of the church for giving us this opportunity to stand before you all. It's my pleasure. And I bless the Lord God Almighty who has given 
me this opportunity even coming here. So I just want to say thank you even to the Sanchez's family. They are so nice to us. You can feel at home hanging around with, with them, even the time we are spending with them, even communicating on phone stuff like that. It's very rare, it's uncommon, uh, finding people like them, and I know a lot of you in here, you are like that couple there. Because me being around with you, even hanging around with you guys, it's amazing. And I'm enjoying being around you guys. So I appreciate so very much. And before we go into the word of God, I just want to share with you something quickly, quickly. Uh, what we are doing back there in Zambia or what the Lord is doing through us uh, in Zambia. There, I know my wife, she has shared already uh, how we went down there at the mission and how the Lord spoke to us that this is where we are supposed to be when it comes to the ministry because we were on our way uh, going to Kitwe and plant the church there, but the Lord had to redirect our direction. And we thank God for that. Yeah, so quickly, quickly, even myself, I just want to say thank you to the Callaways uh, family. They are faithful. Uh, when I say they are these guys, and on behalf of GCMS back there in Zambia, I just want to say thank you uh, for sending this couple to Zambia. God has used them so much, and maybe some of the things themselves, they don't know what God has done through their lives. So we appreciate so very much, and we know that we will continue ministering together, even if we are going to be this side. So we thank God for that. So quickly, quickly, I just want to share with you, as I said, Heria Horn, um, at the mission there, I and my wife, we, we are committed to staying there at the mission, even working with the pastor, Pule, working uh, with him, operating under his uh, leadership. Uh, right now, uh, by the grace of God, I am operating they are the mission as dean of students. We have the Bible Institute, NSBI. Also with the pastors, I'm helping. And also I'm one of the restoration uh, pastors. I think Brian has shared you already when God laid upon his heart concerning uh, that ministry so that we can start helping the struggling churches yeah, and we have seen the hand of God when it comes to restoration. Even the church I'm um, helping right now, we are no longer the same. We have seen the hand of God, and God is doing amazing things. So we thank God for, for that. Also, I think three months and some weeks ago, I don't know if it's four months, uh, we started a ministry uh, using the soccer balls, mobilizing the youths, bringing them together at the mission station there. We have uh, the team, and God is working the young men and women because we have two groups, uh, the young men and the women. So they have been coming, and we have been ministering uh, God's word to, to them, and God had to provide some uh, equipment, but it is my prayer to see that God extend this ministry even into other different uh, places. Yeah, I know I was a professional soccer player. I know in Zambia when you call yourself a professional, uh, because back there in Zambia they know that somebody, if you call yourself a professional, it means you have played outside Zambia. Yeah, but what I know is a professional soccer player is someone who has played uh, when it comes to sign the contract, stuff like that, and they are paying you. 
but back there in Zambia, they think you have to play outside. Myself, I never had that opportunity to play outside. I wanted, that was my desire, but God had to redirect so that I can follow him and do according to what he wants me to do. So I thank God for, for that. So when we go back there in Zambia, hi, and my wife, we are planning to focus on the youth ministry. Yes, Pastor Fule will be in charge, but I and my wife, we are planning to focus on the ministry so that we, we can continue investing in the youths. Because if we invest in the youths, it means we are going to have stronger churches uh, in future. So it is my prayer that we invest whatever God has done in our lives, even the knowledge God has given, we invest in them. Not investing in knowledge only, but also our lives and being examples and examples to them so that they can follow uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So that's what God is doing. Maybe in the future, if God allows, if God allows, God has laid this upon my heart. I don't know when God is going to say, okay, he, now you have to start doing this. God has laid upon my heart to start planting churches in, in the cities. I having something like pastors course in the cities. We have main churches in the bush in the bush area. We have main churches. So even in towns, because if you go in town, yes we have main churches but it's not everyone who is preaching the, the truth in town. LSEs are there, and most of the people, they think that they know Jesus Christ, they are saved, but in the actual sense, they, they are not. So we have to reach everywhere, in bush area, even in, in the city. So if God allows, we are planning to extend also in the cities in the future. So be in prayer for that, and it's my prayer that God is going to bring faithful men, yeah, faithful men, and common men, because this is huge. I and my wife, we cannot do it alone. So we need your prayers. Please continue uh, praying for, for us. So without wasting much of our time, I know she has shared uh, a, lot, my, a lot of stuff, my wife. I just want to let you know that uh, this one, she's a strong woman. She's a strong woman, and I love her, and I don't regret marrying her, because I know that she's an asset when it comes to the kingdom of God, and I appreciate God for that. So God bless you. Continue standing in the Lord, and God will give you grace to continue moving forward. I know it's not an easy thing, but God himself is going to provide the strength we need in order for us to continue moving forward. So before I could read her scripture, shall we pray? Father, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you so much even for this wonderful evening. We give you glory, honor, and adoration. There is none like you, Alpha and Omega. I stand here, Lord, as your servant. Use me as your vessel in the name that is above every other name, that I may speak your word according to your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and all power, of darkness shall prevail in this place. Father, do what no man cannot do and take all thy glory. Let your word come alive in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we pray. Amen and amen. We bless the Lord God Almighty. Thank you so much even for your time. I appreciate so very much. I hope it is my prayer that everyone is going to be attentive unto the word of God. 
because we know that the Word of God is very vital in our lives as Christians. And we just have to prepare our hearts to receive what God want, wants us to receive. Because sometimes what we want to hear is not what we need to hear. Yeah, sometimes what we want to hear is not what we need to hear. So God is going to give us what we need to, to hear from him in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God created man in his own image. But in this time, in this dispensation, in these last days of the church here on earth, it is man trying to create God in his own image. And that's not how it's supposed to be. Man wants to bring God to his standard, to man's standard. But that's not how it's supposed to be. This is the reason why as believers, as church, standard has to be there. And the standard is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That is the standard. And we have to maintain the, the standard. We don't need to lower the standard in order to accommodate everyone, in order to accommodate maybe the world, in order to be loved. We have to maintain the, the standard. That's how it is. That's how it is. And many other times, we just want to bring God into our program. Instead, God taking us into his program. Yeah, sometimes that's what it is. We just want to put God into our program. But we just have to allow God to put us into his program. Because if we put God in our program, it means it is us in charge. It is not God. But if we allow him to put us into his program, it means it is him who is in charge. So we have to maintain the, the standard. Because now the church is no longer, when I say the church, I don't mean this church, I'm speaking like the entire church here on earth. And we know that it's not every true church. Apostate is there. False churches are there. False brethren are there. They are out there. And we have our theme and common. So we are going to go quickly, quickly, without wasting much of our time into the book of uh, Proverbs 20, verses 6. That is the theme God gave me, the theme God gave to the pastor. Because I was asking, what do you want me, God, to, to speak? I tried to go this way, go this way, so that I can come up with the, uh, a, different, uh, a different theme that is going to be in line with it. But God said, no, you just have to go with the scripture itself. So I said, Lord... Who can find a faithful man? So you just have to be faithful to what God has told you, not what you want. So I had to obey. Twenty verses six. Most men will proclaim everyone is on goodness. But a faithful man who can find, a faithful man who can find. So it means it's very rare to find a faithful man, a faithful person. The other side, it means it's common to find unfaithful people. It's common. It's everywhere. But finding a faithful man is very rare. Even in ministry, we have and faithful people, pretenders. And they know how to 
show themselves as if they are with you on the same page. They know how to talk very well. They know how to, 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 to position themselves in order to look only in order to look faithful, but in the highest of God, they are not. This is the reason why a church, we need discernment. We need discernment. Because God has sent a church to go into the world. Do you know that even the enemy he has sent his followers into the church? The same way we have been sent as a church to go into the world and share the gospel, the same way the enemy has sent his agents into the church to distort the image of the church. That's what it is. We have been sent. So we have to be very, very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. What God is saying is very, very vital uh, children of God. Because the time we are living in, it's very difficult sometimes to tell. It's very, very difficult. So may the Lord God Almighty help uh, each one of us. I think I have some few uh, points I just want to share with you uh, concerning who can find uh, a faithful man. It is my prayer that God is going to find you faithful this evening. He's going to find you faithful this evening. Yes, it is sounding, uh, it is sounding uncommon and it is sounding so simple. But it is not simple. It is not. It is not. So I think we are going to look at uh, two points. The first point, if you want uh, to be faithful or to live uh, a faithful life in this world, you will pay a price. The reason why it is very rare to find the faithful men and women uh, in the kingdom, because some they fear to pay the price. There is a price attached to it. Do you know that on top of the mountain, everyone is faithful. Even right now, everyone is looking faithful in here. But down the valley, that's where your faithfulness will be tested. Down the valley, that's where your faithfulness will be tested. Because on top of the mountain, when things are okay, Everyone is faithful. Everyone can say the Lord is good because you are on top of the mountain. But down the valley, that's where your faithfulness will be tested. It will be tested. Are you going to stand like David is saying, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Will the prayers of sacrifice come, come out of the valley, praising God that the Lord, you are good, you are faithful when things are hard. Hallelujah. Our faithfulness will be tested. It will be tested in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So may the Lord God Almighty help us. There is a price to pay. Christianity uh, is not the matter of sugar and butter, but there are some hard stuff we are going to encounter as children of God. Are we going to stand faithfully in the midst of fire, in the midst of storms? Are we going to stand faithfully and continue moving forward and continue proclaiming the word of God? Are we going to continue standing God is looking for such men, men and women of God, who are going to stand in this corrupt world, who are going to stand and preach the word, speak the truth. Many are the times we fear to speak the truth. 
Because if we speak the truth, people will leave maybe the church. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad that you have powerful men of God in here. Pastor Mark Brown, Pastor Bobby. They just speak the truth. They just speak the truth. So you see people going hard because they are offended because of the truth. And we are not going to change the message. We will maintain. We are not going to, to skip some pages. Yeah, skip, uh, because if I'm going to read about a doubt, uh, maybe I'm going to offend somebody in church. We don't need to fear. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We know that he is with us. And we are going to stand in this corrupt world. We are going to stand and share the gospel. We are going to stand as the light of the world. We are not going to fear anything. Because we know that God is with us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? We will stand and proclaim the truth. We serve a mighty God. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. We serve a mighty God. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Rapha. The hell shall die. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David is alive and is here. We are going to stand. We are not going to fear what the enemy is doing. We are not going to fear what the world is doing. Because we have given ourselves unto him. We have surrendered our lives unto him. And we have to allow him to work in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That devil is a liar. The God whom we serve is the mighty God. As it is written all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Now in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. The one who gave himself on the cross of Calvary. The one who died on the cross and he rose on the third day. He is with us and he's coming back soon. He's coming back to take his church. And I can't wait for that day to come. Praise the Lord. If you have the word of God with you, turn with me in the book of Timoth. Second Timoth. Chapter 3, verses 12. The Bible reads, Yea, and all that we will live godly in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. The Bible says, All, yea, and all that we will live, all shall suffer persecution. Shall suffer persecution. That's what the Bible is saying. So, Living a faithful life, it will cost you something. It will cost you something. It will cost you something. And Jesus Christ said in the Gospels that the world is not going to love you. And I do see some young men claiming that they just want to be popular in this world. You are not going to be popular if you are following the steps of Jesus Christ. It is impossible to be popular in the world. You hear, you hear people like the social media stuff, the place when a man of God go out against maybe going against the, the law, you see on the first page of the newspaper advertising because he sinned. 
But when he preaches and the souls come to Jesus' class, you will never see it. It is quiet. You are not going to be popular in this world. The world is not going to help us showing what God is doing. This is the reason why it is our job. It is your job. It is my job to continue preaching, to continue uh, sharing what God is doing. It is our job. It's not the job of the world. And the Bible says the world, they are not going to love us. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. So you pay the price. If you want to follow Jesus, you will pay the price. Maybe you will lose friends. You will lose some stuff in following Jesus Christ. Because you are in his program. You are following Jesus Christ. It's not going to come down to your level and start following you. No. Even in the Bible... No, let me just go and bury my father who will follow you. What was the response of Jesus Christ? He never said, okay, go and bury. Then he, no. So it's not going to come down to our level and start following us. No. Hallelujah. If we bring God to our level, it's very dangerous. Let me show you quickly, quickly. If you have the word of God, let's go in the book of Exodus chapter 12, verses uh, 27. Verses 27, that ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. I'm going to end from here. It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. Let's go in John chapter 2. John chapter 2 verses 13. Chapter 2 verses 13. The Bible says, And the Jews is Passover. It was the Lord's Passover when it started. But after some years now, it is the Jews' is Passover. So if you bring God down to your level, to your standard, what you are doing, no matter how religious it is, it is yours. It is not the Lord's. It is yours. Even right now, some of the things people are doing, it is theirs. Even this church is Jesus Christ's church. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell. My church... It's is Jesus' church. This is the reason why this is our final authority. This is our final authority, the word of God. So we will pay the price if we want to live a faithful life, a faithful servant. Because sometimes God is going to ask you to do what the people around you will not understand. God is going to ask you to do something which will make maybe the people around uncomfortable, even maybe to distance uh, themselves from you. They had stuff. Like Abraham, go and give your son Isaac. That was a hard stuff. But the faithfulness of Abraham, he had to obey. And obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's what the Bible says. So you just need to obey. Even if it's not making sense, you just have to obey. That's what the Lord is saying. We have to continue. We will pay the price if we want to follow Jesus Christ faithfully. Faithfully, following his steps, following his steps. It's not an easy thing. It is not an easy thing. You go through fire. You go through difficult stuff. But God is with you. God is with you. So quickly, quickly, without wasting much of our time, I think I'll go on the last point. The last point is... 
If you are faithful, you will continue walking in faithful. There are some results. There are some uncommon results. Uncommon results. Shall we read in the book of Job? Job 13, verses 15. And common results. Because the Bible says after Job losing all the things, he worshipped God. And he never sinned. That's what the Bible is saying. He never sinned. He worshipped God. A faithful servant of God. 1315. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. But I will maintain my own words before him. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. This kind of faith which doesn't depend upon the tangible fulfillment. It is uncommon. This kind of faith, it is uncommon, which doesn't depend upon the tangible fulfillment. Even if you are sick, you are not getting the healing you want. Though you slay me, yet I will trust in him. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all things are possible. All things are possible. You can continue moving with the thorn in your flesh. It is there. Hallelujah. It is there. When I was studying the, the book of uh, Daniel, I know after throwing those three guys into the fire, I know it's a picture of tribulation concerning the, the children of Israel, stuff like that. But as I was studying the lives of these guys, even Daniel uh, himself, he was thrown into the den of uh, the lion. God never said, Daniel, you are not going to be thrown, I'm going to. Because sometimes we fear going through some other stuff. We fear. And sometimes most of the Christians, they want the results. We are talking about the results, but they are not ready for the process. Not ready for the process, but they just want results. They are not ready for the process. Everyone I think needs to, yeah, I think I, I would love to have this kind of faith. Are you ready for the process? And don't fight the process because sometimes we fight the process. They are fighting the process. Allow God to do what he wants to do uh, in your life. So this is uncommon. It's very rare to find this kind of faith. It's very rare. Even if I don't receive, am I going to continue. Even if you start the life of Paul, you are going to find Paul saying it's very rare hearing people I don't know if you have ever heard apart from Paul. He's saying although I'm in chains the word of God is not bound. Are you going to continue moving forward? This kind of faith is uncommon. It's uncommon. Because sometimes, even going to church, you are going to find that it's difficult. To do what the Lord has said is difficult sometimes to some of the Christians. And if we are not going to allow uh, the process, it means we are not going to have the results. And this is the generation we are living in. We need to stand. This is the evil generation. It's the generation which calls evil good and good evil. And if you become serious, even I've seen this, 
where I'm coming from. You are serious with the word of God. You are going to be considered difficult. You are going to, you are going to be considered a bad person because you are standing on the truth. And when you stand on the truth, that's when you will say, who is for Jesus and who is not? When you stand, because those whom you think that oh, we, we are together, we are together, stand on the truth, you will see the true colors. We have to stand faith free. We have to continue moving forward in this planet called health. It's high time for the children of God to rise and shine in the name of Jesus Christ. The night is fast spent. It's high time. No more games. It's high time to be serious. It's high time to be serious, to continue moving forward in the name of Jesus Christ. And you can do all things through Christ which strengthens. You can do all things. As I was talking about even Daniel, he was thrown into the den of the lion. God wanted to show power that I am not going to do what I did uh, with Samson. He killed the lion. But I'm going to allow you to sit next to the lion. But it's, it's, going, it's not going to do anything. He can allow for you to have a thorn. But it's not going to kill you until you finish the course. Until you finish the course. That's what I believe. Until you finish the course. God is not going to take you if you are still running. You have not yet finished the course. You go through difficulty, sickness, stuff like that. But you continue forward. Until you finish. Like Paul is saying, I have fought a good fight of faith. I have finished my course. Are you going to fight a good fight of faith? Jesus Christ is coming soon. We need to be heavenly minded, not earthly minded. Because sometimes when we talk about heaven, sometimes it's a boring message to some of the Christians. Why? Because their minds are down here on earth. And we have been taught to set our minds up there where Christ sitteth. Hallelujah. We have to set our minds up there in the name of Jesus Christ because we are strangers, pilgrims here on earth. We are just passing through. And this is not our home. This is not our home. Our home is in heaven. This is not our home. Our home is in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the temporary home. But our real home is in heaven. Hallelujah. May the Lord God Almighty literally bless each one of us. I'll read the last uh, verse in the book of Acts 20, verses 19 through 24. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind. And with many tears and temptations which befell me by the laying in word of the Jews. And now I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. But I've showed you and I've taught you publicly from house to house. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me, that shall befall me. Save the Holy Ghost, witnesseth in every city, serving that bonds and afflictions abide me. This is 24. But none of these things move me. None. What is moving you? None of these things. This is uncommon results. 
None of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace of God. None of these things move me. That's what Paul is saying. How are, we con are we going to continue moving forward in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the impossibilities specialist, self-existent God, eternal existent God, our buckler, our strong tower, the fountain of life is with us and is alive in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. May the Lord God Almighty uh, bless each one of us in here, I hope we are going to be found faithful this evening in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you so much for this wonderful evening. We give you glory, honor, and adoration. Thank you so much for what you have done. Thank you so much for your word. I pray that your word will bring the fruit you deserve in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I bless you. I honor you. Take the full uh, preeminence in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we pray. Amen and amen. Lord bless. Over to Pastor Mark.